You know, you know, in the Greatness Engineering Hour show, we're making sure that we bring you all the champions, the real greatness engineer who are making a difference around the world, either in their environment or globally. So we, we, we are, we are really. I mean, I'm really excited today because I know there's going to be a lot of inspiration and there's going to be a lot of learning today. Uh, so make sure you have a, a pen and a notebook to really uh, start to write down, you know, everything that, you know, all the nuggets and what's going to be shared today, uh, because there's going to be a lot. We're going to talk about, you know, living, you know, your best life. And uh, our guest today is actually going to, you know, have a conversation with us to know how we can do that. So today we have, uh, we have Dr. Robin West with us. And uh, for those who don't know Dr. West, he, like I said, it's, he's a very inspiring figure and a global, a global champion and a global influencer. He's a successful entrepreneur. Uh, and he has studied success, you know, ba you know based on what he's accomplished, he has studied his success, uh, developed a blueprint, and now he's sharing, you know, the formula with other entrepreneurs so that they can replicate, you know, the same, the same result in, in their own professional or personal life. And his devotion to help others, you know, uh, make him realize that you know he could uh, he could he could have an impact in in uh, in a different area and that led him to establish Black Belt Speakers, a globally renowned uh, training firm for emerging speakers, leaders, and communicator. And Dr. West didn't stop at this level. I mean, he's, he has received numerous awards globally from the highest authorities and uh, some of the most influential people globally, uh, of which, you know, the, the President Laugh Achievement Award from uh, President Barack Obama in 2016. And he has developed as well a new communication paradigm called BILOG, and I hope we're going to uh, learn more about it today, which is considered by many to be the next evolution of change in how countries, companies, and communities communicate and build for the future. So like I said, Dr. West is a real champion and inspiration and has a speaker, trainer, and author, and world civil ambassador. Uh, his message actually transcends uh, the stage, the page, and, you know, and capture the, the heart of a lot of people around the world. And we, and, and those people are really uh, ready to hear, you know, what he has to say, and it's making a difference in their life. So let's, you know, let's start the show and uh, bring uh, Dr. West um, to start our conversation today. I started to be more aware of some of the abusive sides of Hello, good morning, Dr. West. Welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hour show. We are so excited to host you today. 
Thank you, and uh, good good evening to you. But it's good evening to me. Me. thank you very much. I'm, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Yes. So I'm, I mean, you know, like I was saying, I mean, we have here a global champion here with us, an inspiration figure. But you know, for the sake of those who are tuning in who haven't heard from you. We want to know who is Dr. West and, uh, you know, what have you been doing or what have you keeping you up right now? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I know is we're all multidimensional. We're all multifaceted. I mean, there's things we do in one time and then we do something different at another time. And mm -hmm. so to try and tell you everything I, I do, it would take probably this whole show because I really love being involved. And so the mm -hmm. best thing I can tell you at this time who I am, I'm a world civility ambassador. And right now, in a moment where our country is experiencing difficulty, you know, because of situ current situations, uh, I want to be an inspiring voice of change. And I, I would like to share with the listeners that uh, I was just invited to go meet with some of the police leadership uh, to discuss change. And so for mm -hmm. me right now, I think the, the most important per person I am in this moment is a world and civility ambassador looking mm -hmm. to help bring change to my country. Yes, and that's that's very important because you know today we're going to talk about uh, living our best life, and it's it's actually a very difficult moment, a very challenging moment for all of us with all this uncertainty. There's been the pandemic, and now there's you know all the event in 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 uh, in the U.S. where you know the uncertainty is growing. The uh, you know people are getting uncomfortable. There's the volatility, so it. It can be very hard to think about, you know, living the best life because Indeed. people we, we only see negativity around. So, how do you think, you know, we can we can do that? I think we have to determine what our purpose is. At, at mm -hmm. any given time, we have a purpose. Mm -hmm. There was one time in my life, I, I I I'm a martial artist, a seventh degree black belt, and I wanted to have a martial arts school and I wanted to impact the lives of youth, and and that's what I did at that time. And then I, I assisted in surgery and I wanted to help start the surgical assistant profession in my home state of Kansas. And I did that at that time. Then I said, I wanted to be a global speaker. And so I'm doing that now. I think, how do you live your best life? You, you have to determine what is the right thing for you at this time, because we know that as we move throughout life, sometimes our purpose changes. And so mm -hmm. I think the real thing is you have to decide and find out what your purpose is for this moment in time. Yes, and uh, and and sometimes that's the difficult thing because we think that we at a certain point we have a purpose and uh, things you know life happen and we get lost in the process and we think that you know everything is done. So how do you you do that? How do you make sure that each step along the way you you can define your purpose? Is there a, a process, a step, you know, to certain step to follow? What what is the process? Well, I think, you you know, so many times in life we focus on listening to our head and mm -hmm. we don't focus on listening to our heart. When I knew that it was time for me to change, to go to a different process, it wasn't a head conversation. It was a heart conversation. My heart was telling me there was something different for me at this time. And then my head followed it. And mm -hmm. so I, I think what I would have to say to the listeners is that, you know, there's things that we're always going to be involved in. Some of us have jobs that we love. Uh, some of us have jobs that we like. But what I know is there's things that we were paid to do, but then mm -hmm. there's also things that we were made to do. And they're, mm -hmm. not, they're not always the same thing. So while you're doing that things that, you are, that you're paid for, you should also be investing in those things that you were made for. And I think you find that through listening to your heart and following mm -hmm. its guidance. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's that's important to to remember because uh, a, a lot of a lot of the time we uh, be, because of you know the way uh, things are, are are structured we tend to just follow whatever we see out outside of us we don't really listen a lot about uh, in, we don't really go back inside yeah. and understand what we really want. And it can it can be very detrimental, especially in those moments of challenges when we really need, you know, we, we really need to have some reassurance. And this reassurance doesn't 
come if we don't go back inside and, uh, and understand who we are and and how we can move forward. So, I mean, in this, you know, in in this process, um, obviously, you know, you you said we're starting with the, you know, defining our purpose in different, you know, in different. Uh, um, all the way through our journey and this purpose can change and we have to listen to our heart but what's next because the the thing is you know yes you know what you want but how do you you know uh practically you know uh create this this life that you, re you really want two things number one i think first of all like i said we have to be authentic in who we actually are mm -hmm. um, you know so many people have never taken an introspective look at who they are and then an introspective look at who they want to be. Because it's easy to get caught up in what someone else is doing. We see the limelight, we see the spotlight, and we say, I want that over there. When in mm -hmm. all reality, it's not for us. And then we cast ourselves into a system and we work and work and work and work to try and be the top of that system. Mm -hmm. What I've found is that it's not about trying to compete with someone else to be number one. As a speaker, I never try and go compete with another speaker. I'm not trying to outdo Les Brown, who's one of my mentors. I'm not trying to be like another speaker. I'm, I'm trying to be authentically Ruben West. And what that does is it shifts the focus. So I think instead of trying to be fight to be number one, just be the only one. God created mm -hmm. you as an original. Now, once you know what that is, you have to turn that into a plan mm -hmm. and and not just a plan, but an action plan. So a lot of people create a plan, but they don't create an action plan. In other words, some some actual steps that they're, go they're going to take on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. I think after you determine what that is that you want to do or where you want to go or what you want to be, then you have to create that action plan with mm -hmm. steps to get there. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would suggest is uh, as great as that is, we know that accountability is key. That if we look at going back to school, if we look at going back to high school or for those who went to college, if they didn't give us assignments and deadlines to turn in mm -hmm. things, we probably would never get it all turned in. And so having not only the plan and an action plan, but an accountability partner that you report to on regular basis with achievements completed, that's gonna be critical because it increases our likelihood to succeed by about fifty to seventy percent, mm -hmm. and 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 I and I like it because uh, sometimes what's happening is that we 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 I mean we we discover who we are, we have the knowledge, but then then the next step is to take action, and that's where we get stuck because we think that we are done, and we don't we don't really plan for. For, to to be able to you know uh, um, experience you know and apply this knowledge to be able to go to the next step and to the next level of our greatness and finally you know have this life that we we always wanted to have. So um, obviously you know when when you go through this process there are challenges and uh, you, you know it's it's not always an, an easy process and that's where people get stuck. So how, you know, how do you think, I mean, based on your experience and, you know, the, 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 what you've seen so far, how do you think we can, you know, go and, and manage those, those challenges and, 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 and be able to keep going and, and, you know, and, and reach the level of, uh, you know, and reach our goals. Yeah. So it's not a question of if there will be challenges, it's when. That's, that's mm -hmm. all life. There's always mm -hmm. going to be challenges. As a matter of fact, I like to say there's only three types of problems in life. The ones you've been through, the ones you're going through, and the ones that are waiting on you. So if you're not going through any right now, rest assured that some are on, some are on the way. And so what do you do? Well, well, the first thing you do is you have to have a goal so big that it pulls you. You see, and, and all we have to do is look practically at life. If, if you look practically at life, I love using the example of a mother. Because a mother will do, watch this, whatever it takes. Thanks. A mother will do it with a father, a mother will do it with a grandmother, and a mother will do it by herself. She will do whatever it takes. Why? Because that love is so strong, that goal is so strong that it pulls her in that direction. And so once we commit ourselves to a goal that's so strong that it pulls us, 
then then our problem seems smaller than the possibilities. But mm -hmm. if you have a small goal, that's why I said we can't just dream. We have to dream big. Mm -hmm. You can't just dream. You have to dream big because if you have a small dream, then it's not going to be big enough to pull you past the difficulties because they are on the way. So mm -hmm. when you have a dream that's so big that not that you want to accomplish it, but that you have to accomplish it, that it's your mm -hmm. life mission to accomplish it, you will do it. Now, what I will say is that most of the time, I heard Les Brown say this quote, he said, most people fail in life not because they dream, they aim too high and, and miss. Most people fail because they aim too low and hit. And mm -hmm. I didn't understand what that meant for so long, but, but I want to tell the audience that I have a martial arts school. And, and that was a dream of mine. I thought it was great. And, and guess what? I have one. And I've had a successful martial arts for school for 22 years. Now, looking back, I realized my dream was too small. I have another gentleman who wanted a global martial arts organization. And guess what he has? He has a global martial arts organization. And so mm -hmm. for me, if I would have said I was going to have 10 schools, then I would have worked to develop 10 schools. And even if I only got halfway there, I would still mm -hmm. have five. But I only said one, and now I have one. So what's the point? The point is... We have to have a dream so big it pulls us and it allows for other people's skills and talents. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and it's uh, it's it's sometimes the the you know the, the difficult part to to have is that we tend to underestimate ourselves sometimes and we we just want to be uh, stay in our comfort zone and because we know that if we dream big it means that we really have to stretch ourselves and stretch our comfort zone. And uh, we prefer sometimes to just say, OK, no, I'm going to really, you know, manufacture my, my dream, my life around being, you know, comfortable. And it, it can it can actually be deadly and uh, in the in the long run. So, I mean, you know, you you, you we pull ourselves. So you, you talked about the purpose, the plan, the, the accountability and being able to have, you know, a big dream. But what what is a big dream? I mean, because that that's the thing. What is a big dream? Right. So a big dream is the thing that moves you. And a big dream moves from time to time. Mm -hmm. I love using the example as a mother because uh, the mother, hey, her, her first dream is get the baby up walking and talking and having the baby say, mama, oh, my God, they said it. But they don't mm -hmm. stop there. They go to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, and then at some point when the child is grown, gone and successful, they may say, hey, I need a different dream now. Mm -hmm. uh, they may say, I want to go um, help the community. I want to be a global leader. It, it doesn't matter. But the point is that the dream, the big dream changes from time to time. Mm -hmm. Now, here, here's what I can tell you. If I had to decide, divide, um, if I have to define a big dream, I read this book and I recommend it. It's called Chase the Lion mm -hmm. by Mark Batterson. And he said, the Go after a dream that's destined to fail without divine intervention. You hear that? You hear that? Go after mm -hmm. a dream that's destined to fail without divine intervention. In other words, if you can do it by yourself, that dream is not big enough. He said, mm -hmm. go after a dream that's so big that you need your divine power to help manifest that dream. When I said that I was going to be a global speaker and that I wanted to speak to world leaders, I had no idea how that would work. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. don't have to have we don't have to know how it's going to work. What we have to do is we have to take action to make it work. See, mm -hmm. what I believe is God wouldn't teach us about faith if we weren't going to have to use it. And so if we know how it's going to work, we don't need faith, which means we don't need our creator. Mm -hmm. so we have to have a dream that is beyond what we can do on our own. And it allows for us to bring other people into that dream. Now, let me tell mm -hmm. you real quick why that's important. Because there are certain things that you live in every day that you don't even realize. There's certain levels of mediocrity that we live in that we don't realize. And it's only until we get exposed to others that we're aware of it. As a matter of fact, let me put it like this. I don't know who it was that discovered water, but I'm sure it wasn't the fish, right? They live in it every day. They don't even recognize it. It's, it's right there. They don't know, right? Mm -hmm. It's only until we pull them out of the water that they realize they're not in the water. And sometimes mm -hmm. you need that person to pull you out of your comfort zone to even realize that you are stuck in it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So let's let's look at, I see there's a lot of people, uh, you know, here today. Uh, we have Charles here. Hey, uh, Charles. Yes, Charles is here. 
and uh, Carol is here as well. Uh, from they are from Canada, I think, and Leah is uh, keen from uh, from Germany. Nice. Uh, so they, they, there's quite a lot of comments uh, going on. I mean, they, I think they appreciate what's going on, not working so on on someone else' purpose and competing, being authentic and being original. Yes, we all agree about that. I mean, we compete mm -hmm. just with our ourselves. Um, so there's uh, Beth as well, Beth Fisher. Um, yeah. Hey, Beth. So tuning in, uh, Sonia Robinson. I yeah. think those are, you know, um, people that uh, you probably know. I know you Tracy know. as well. Tracy, you must have a goal so big that pulls you. That pulls you. Yes, we we agree on that. We have to get out of our comfort zone and get out of our way. And Tracy again, uh, go after a dream that is destined to fail without God's intervention. So you know a lot of you know a, a lot of good nuggets. I, I I assume that everybody is writing down like crazy right now because and it's just the beginning. So let's have a small break and we will come back with uh, doc, Dr. West um, again and continue our conversation. Are not here at Black Belt Speakers, you must be from a different planet. I'm just excited and ready to learn. I'm ready to get all of the information that I need to have so I can do this great work. Black Belt, Black Belt, that's what it's all about. Take the stage and you know we go wild out. Without a doubt, we move the masses, no molasses. We the fastest movement here, rising up, throw your hands. So we are back today. We our guest is uh, Dr. Robin West, and uh, we've had the opportunity to start this conversation, and it's high standards conversation with a lot of learning from Dr. West. And we are talking today about you know living our best life, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. West is helping us to understand how we can do that, especially in the middle of such you know uncertainty and uh, volatility. Uh, in our life right now. So doc, Dr. West, one question, I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, it's, you know, uh, we have all those dreams, but can you really do it alone? I mean, yes, you have faith. Yes, you believe in God. Yes, you believe that, you know, things are going to happen. But what is the, you know, what do you need to, you know, to, as a support for, for, for that, you know? Yeah. So you have to surround yourself with with watch this, like-minded people, mm -hmm. but not necessarily people with the same skill set. Mm -hmm. Like-minded, different skill set. Everybody coming together can't have the same skill. Mm -hmm. See, what what I love is let's look at an athlete. An athlete may have the raw talent, but they have to have someone that brings the best out in them, that pushes mm -hmm. them to the next level, that gets them to try harder. Now. Once you develop 
that in you? Because let me tell you what I believe. I believe that most people don't win because they've never developed the discipline to keep going when it's tough. Mm-hmm. Listen to that. Most people don't win because they haven't developed the discipline to keep going with this when it's tough. It's like a marathon runner. See, when a marathon runner is running, they say there's a point where you hit the wall, where your inside starts to hurt, that you sometimes get dizzy, your body starts to cramp up, you get leg cramps. And, and, and But if you keep going, if you push through it, that at some point, watch this, you hit your second win. Mm-hmm. Now, now, here's the problem when it comes to our dreams. Most people have never ran far enough on our first win to find out if we have a second win. They quit mm-hmm. and they quit and they quit. That's the problem. That's why you have to surround yourself with people that will pull you through the difficult times. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and that's a key point because you know you have you you have to the team is and I think some people call it you know a mastermind team mastermind. and you know and you you also have mentors sponsors uh, you know coaches so that's uh, that that's that's uh, you know think people that you really want to have around you and you know it it's uh, and but how do you find you know because that, that's the thing is you know what it's one thing when you are in a certain environment and then you're looking for those right people but how do you find those people because it can be very difficult as well you know yeah, it, it is not can be it is very difficult because mm-hmm. you need the right person and and, mm-hmm. and one of the benefits that we have right now is we live in a global time. So now because of social media and programs like this, you're in Perth, Australia. I'm in uh, the USA, in, mm-hmm. in Illinois. But now we're not limited to people that are local. We can go global to find people that can help support us. So the main thing you have to do is you have to look for them. So mm-hmm. it, says, it says, seek and you shall find. Not sit and you will find. Seek and mm-hmm. you shall find. So you have to be seeking. The other thing did you have to be able to listen to other people, be able to ask other people who helped you. And then when you find someone or you think you found someone, get some references. Because here's what I know when, we, when we're talking about development and coaching and, and mentorship and things like that, that a lot of people, when you go for coaching or for help, uh, a lot of coaches are just focused on their income and not your outcome. And mm-hmm. so a great thing is to get references for people that you're interested in working with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, and and it's uh, it's it's important to to remember that because sometimes because there's so many coaches now and so many people on the market, and so it it's really important to to get to you know to connect with the right person who uh, who is going to bring you know value into in, in into into what you're doing. And and help you to to uh, to really you know be able to accomplish what what you you said you, you wanted to accomplish. Exactly. So I mean, you you've uh, you've built several you know several um, ventures, and one of them is the Black Bell. Uh, speakers. Yeah. So, so what is the black bay speaker? Because uh, when we were watching the video, there's one of the uh, speakers saying, "If you don't, if you're not part of this, uh, you know, this organization, then that's it. You know, you, you're uh-huh. missing almost everything." So yeah. we really want to know what it is and uh, and, and understand, you know, uh, what is it all about and how it works. Absolutely. So uh, I, I said before that I'm a seventh degree black belt. I had a martial arts school for for 22 Mm -hmm. years, but black belt speakers, the reason I named it that is for the standard. See, Mm -hmm. reaching black belt level, there's a standard. And so what I'm saying is that there's a standard of communication that we want to help people reach, that Mm -hmm. we want to help them put the punch in their presentation. And, And my goal is not to get you to speak like me. My goal is to get you to speak like you. What do I mean by that? Most of the time when people say, well, I'm not a good speaker, I wish I was better, what would, how would you like to speak? They always have another person that they think, well, that's a good speaker. I'd like mm-hmm. to speak like them. And what I like showing them is that, no, you're a good speaker if we bring out the best in you. Remember, it's not about being number one. It's about being the only one. And so mm-hmm. what I want to help individuals do is bring out their authentic voice. Why? Because we need those voices in every area of the world. Mm-hmm. So Black Belt Speakers is a global communication training firm that helps people bring out the best in their communication, whether it's corporate c- communication, personal communication, or even uh, communication to an audience or a group. 
Mm -hmm. And and there's a process in all of this, and you know, and sometimes we don't we don't realize is that you know becoming a, a, a good speaker, there's a process behind behind it. I, there's a science behind it, and so can you tell us a little bit about you know uh, the process uh, to to really you know get you know the authentic us to to bring on the table when we speak? Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. I love listening to you speak. Number one, I love your accent, but I love where you're coming from. I love what you stand for. I love what you do. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that we're using the same words? Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that you bring guests on your show and they all communicate and, and they, they use similar words. They can pick mm -hmm. and choose and organize them different, but they use them similarly. Now, what does that have to do with speaking? Well, speaking is a projection of who you are, but mm -hmm. there's still fundamentals to speaking. Just like in the English language, there's fundamentals. And when you're learning it, they teach you those fundamentals. A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. They'll say I before E, except after C. Those are fundamentals to allow you to use the, the language more easily. Well, guess what? Speaking has the same types of fundamentals. So the first thing is learning the fundamentals of speaking. What is a callback? What is a tieback? What is a bridge? What is a verbal visual connection? All of those things, and now, when you learn those fundamentals, just like you do with English, you can use them in an authentic way to express who you are. So the first step is learning the fundamentals. And when you learn them, what you realize is everybody uses them. You'll be watching your preacher or your minister, or you'll be watching a politician. You'll be watching a show and you'll realize that everybody is using those fundamentals just like we do with the English language. So the mm -hmm. first step is learning the fundamentals and then applying them to you and your life authentically. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 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 that's important to know because sometimes we can just all impro improvise ourselves, you know, as speaker without knowing those fundamental. Yeah. Because it's important to understand how you can have an impact and how you can better connect with people, especially you know in this complex environment where things are changing quickly Perfect. and uh, and 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 we, they have challenges all over the place. So it's 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 really important to have those fundamental. And, and I understand what how we can use them and when we can use them. So, will you say that you know speaking is uh, is one thing that we we need to master if we want to to live our best life? I, I would say it is because our words are what we use to communicate everything. See, when mm -hmm. you start communicating in a more profound way it allows people to not only see you differently, but see themselves differently. Mm -hmm. see, how do people win an election? Through mm -hmm. words. They, they use words. How do people get to you to buy things? Through advertisements. They they use words. How do they communicate with you to help, help you get better? They, mm -hmm. they use words. And so your ability to communicate, uh, to communicate allows people to see things in you that they may not see in other people that are there, but they mm -hmm. just can't see them. So like I told you, I got a call yesterday, last night to say, hey, Ruben, we want you to be a part of a team to go up and speak to the leadership, the police leadership in Minneapolis. Well, why would they pick me? Mm -hmm. right? Because they know that I have a way with words. Mm -hmm. And so communication is everything. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's right. Communication is everything. Because if you can't express yourself, nobody can, you know, can can actually help you and right. can can you know uh, help you in your dream and it's important to to uh, to be able to do that and what about i mean in communication there's also the listening part so how you know how do you integrate you know the, this part so the speaking and the uh, the listening how do they you know how, how do they integrate you know together my mentor, Les Brown, told me, he said, Ruben, the best speakers are the best listeners. Mm -hmm. Winston Churchill said it takes courage to stand up and speak, but it also takes courage to sit down and listen. And so one of the great things about developing your speaking is that with the right coach, you're developing your listening as well. Mm -hmm. Because your ability to listen gives you the ability to speak to the issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that listening is twice as important as the speaking. Why? Because the best speakers make the fewest words go the furthest. When you have a sound bite on a news clip or a TV show, you've got to get it 
in in a few seconds. You don't have mm-hmm. 20 minutes to say what you need to say. So to be able to package your content in a digestible, deliverable way is critical. And that comes from not only speaking, but being able to listen as well to know what the comment needs to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and it's uh, it's uh, it's key, like you said, it's key to to be able to because it, it also helps you to be patient and listen and strategize at the same time because it's not just about getting the words; it's also about you know how you're gonna you know get your message out and it listening and you know, pausing give you the opportunity to think about all of this and deliver the great you know the the the, the right message exactly. so I, I you know you know i would assume that as as uh, you know as a world civil ambassador you 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 need to you know to to master all of this but first of all what is what are you doing as you know what what, what is the role of the world civil ambassador because i, I don't think a lot of us know exactly, you know, what what you are doing when when you 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 do such a you know you, you do such a work. The role of a world civility ambassador is to promote civility and peace throughout the world. Mm-hmm. You know, the bottom line is uh, we believe in the golden rule, and that is to treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. And, and it's interesting that most religions have that in there somewhere that we should treat people the way we want to be treated. And so as a world civility ambassador, my goal is to promote civility throughout the world, wherever I go and bring peace and understanding. And Mm -hmm. and interesting enough, the best way to do that is two ways. Number one, through an example, and number two, through positive, peaceful words. And and uh, so what's what's happening right now? Because I mean, they, we need people like you right now because it's you know it's uh, it's burning everywhere. I would say. Exactly. And so, what is you know um, what is the way forward for for that? You know, to help you know ease you know the the problem that we have right now. There's obviously the pandemic. We've created an economic you know crisis yeah. and then now you know all the event about you know racism yeah. and uh, and and uh, injustice yeah. so so what do you think of all of this and and what you know a role are you going to play um, yeah. as a civil uh, civil ambassador so what do i think of all of it i think it's uh disheartening and it's unnerving but it's necessary mm-hmm. what do they say never let a good crisis go to waste Mm-hmm. And so, so many times we just put a Band-Aid over situations, over issues, and we never get to the, full, the core mm-hmm. fundamental problem. What we know is that the, as a society, we have a collective consciousness mm-hmm. and, and it, it is collective. So let's just take a quick example from history. You have to ask, was Hitler bad or good? See, and the point was when he had killed one million people, there wasn't enough people standing up saying it's a problem. So guess mm-hmm. what? He killed two million. And then there still wasn't enough people until it went to three million, four million, five million, six million. And then collectively, the world said, we have to put a stop to this now. Mm -hmm. But in his country and the people who who liked him and and like what he was doing, they thought it was the right thing to do. And so what it just shows is that at some point we have to have a, a collective consciousness that sets the morals for society. That's why they said bad things happen when good people do nothing because until good people did something, 6 million people lost their lives. So what's mm-hmm. the answer? It's the answer is to, to have everybody interject into the collective consciousness and let's decide collectively who we are, who we're going to be and what we're going to stand for and then make rules, regulations and laws and a society that reflects those things. And so mm-hmm. that's going to take everyone. It's not a one person job, but at some mm-hmm. point, most people, they, they when it doesn't happen to them, they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we have to be shocked into doing something. And so when they said, wait a minute, they're killing all these people, we've got to do something. Mm-hmm. We need everybody to stand up and say, we've got to do something. It, mm-hmm. My problem is your problem and your problem is my problem. And so it's critical that we have to do something. And so my goal is to be one of those individuals that are doing something and at least spreading a positive messages, coming up with new strategies. And I believe that dialogue, this new communications paradigm that I talked about, is one of those strategies that's going to help co- countries and communities create change. 
Mm -hmm. And and it's uh, it's it's good that you're talking about uh, you know consciousness uh, because you know this movement started you know the the uh, you know the killing of the uh, the, the the black um, yeah. black men in in yeah. the US you know it started a movement because you know it's happening everywhere it's happening you know it's been happening here like I said to our indigenous population as well. But you had to have, uh, you know, something happening somewhere else for people to start to come together and understand that, you know, it's actually a, pro a, a, a problem, a, a global problem, and we have to all come together and all, you know, bring our voices together to, to start to, you know, find a solution to the problem and uh, and yeah. it's important to 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 do that because sometimes we tend to think that okay it's a, you know we only have this problem here and then we we don't try to reach out and and we actually lose the opportunity to solve the problem and it becomes even worse remember um, i told you i don't mm -hmm. know who discovered water but it probably wasn't the fish right mm -hmm. because they live in it every day uh, mm -hmm. That issue with Charles Floyd was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back, okay? Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. that's the case, that means there were millions and millions of straws. Mm -hmm. Now that it's open, you see all of these people that have been slighted, that, that know somebody that was slighted, that decided to get involved. And that's why it spilled over the way it, the way it has, because mm -hmm. that was just the straw. But there were so many other people that have experienced similar things that now they, they've gotten involved. And that's why I said it's necessary. It's necessary mm -hmm. to wake us up to a new possibility of who we can be and how we can treat each other. Okay, so we're gonna have another another break, and we'll come back and uh, continue our conversation with uh, Dr. West. <music> back and uh, with Dr. West and you know what I wanted to ask you Dr. West since we're talking about we've been talking about you know living our best life what do you think is key to success you know I mean how you know how do you define success especially when looking at you know living your best life I, I, man, that's a great question. How do you define success? Some people mm -hmm. define success with material things. Some people define success with money. But I define success as the answer that I give to my maker. Irma mm -hmm. Bombeck said, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope I would not have one single bit of talent left. And I can say I have used everything you have given me. How do you mm -hmm. define the success? to be able to stand before your creator, whoever you determine your creator is, and say, I have used everything you have given me. And the ability to do that is going to require us to dig deep within who we are and who we were created to be and use those talents, skills, and gifts to for the betterment of other people. To mm -hmm. me, that's success. Yes, and uh, and and uh, it's it's a it's actually a personal you know a personal thing success and like you said some look at more the materials material side, and uh, and and that's really what I want I want the audience to understand is that you define your own success you do. and uh, and and as far as you know we're talking about defining our our best life we also define our our alone our best life mm -hmm. and then along the way when we we clear about what we want to do then things start to you know to um to to happen and it's it's important to have this clarity up front uh mm -hmm. before you know starting anything so you know we we almost you know we're getting 
you know, uh, toward the end. And one question that I really love, you know, asking to my uh, my guest is, you know, what are your expectations from the future? I mean, with everything that's happening and what is the legacy that you want to leave? Mm, yeah. The legacy I want to leave, and, and I want everybody to catch this, the legacy that I want to leave is the life that I live. Oh, come on, somebody, listen to that. You ah, you're not willing to live one. The only reason Dr. King left a legacy, he lived one. The only reason Mother Teresa, Mahatma Gandhi left legacies because they lived one. And so what legacy do I want to leave? The life I lived. And the question I have for the people watching is, what legacy do you want to leave? And then mm -hmm. answer it by the life you live. So my actions for the future is to evolve into the person that God is called, calling me to be in this next season. He's already had me be a surgical assistant. He already had me be a martial arts instructor. He had me own a medical staffing company and a surgical assistant company. Those are all in the past. And so what we know is that uh, used to bees don't make no honey, right? Used to bees don't make no honey. So it's not about what I've done in the past. It's how mm -hmm. I'm going to live for the future. And I believe that my future calling is to bring dialogue into the world, is to help other people with their messages and their voices, get their voice out to become a voice of change and to make a global impact. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's so powerful, so, so powerful. So the legacy I want to live is the life that I live. And that's, you know, and, and, and it's so profound that because it puts us in the spot, we really yeah. have to start thinking about it now. Right, it's right not back. tomorrow. It's not about the past, like you said, and it's not right. about tomorrow. It's about now, really, you know, be clear about what we want to do, how we want to be remembered for what, and and make sure that uh, like what Les Brown always say, we die empty because die empty. empty. We've used we you know we've everything used everything we that we yes exactly we, exactly. So it's uh, it, it, it's very important to remember that like uh, don't even leave anything. And my motto actually is that don't leave anything on the table of life. Come Just on. put everything. And then when you go, you're, you're, you're done and uh, you, you don't you don't have to regret anything. I've got so, to tell you this. Hold on. Most people. I love that you said don't leave in anything on the table of life. But most people leave the fine china in the cabinet. They mm -hmm. only ever take out the fine china on special occasions as if their life is all wrapped into paper plates. No, use the fine china. Don't leave mm -hmm. anything on the table, but use the fine china. You have mm -hmm. skills and talents. What are you saving it for? You. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me, I would like to share something with the audience, if I may. One yeah, you can. Yeah, one of the definitely. things that keeps us from living our life is the inner critic. We have this voice inside our head that tells us what we can't be and what we can't do and what we can't have. And so one of the things that I had to do in order to do what I'm doing now was to be able to silence that inner critic. And, and I put together a program, it's called Silencing the Inner Critic. And it helps you take away that negative voice. And then it helps you build a positive affirmation. My affirmation, I'm a balanced, empathetic, sensitive leader, connecting on a divine level, creating new opportunities and guiding millions toward their God-given dreams. I do that each and every day, but I did it through my Silencing the Inner Critic program. And I would like to give that as a gift. I coach a lot of people, but mm -hmm. I'd like to give that as a gift to the people who took the time to show up to your program. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Maybe I just put my email there. Yes. Yes. So uh, my assistant, Dr. Tracy Ward, I think she's probably listening. If you will put my email and the email, mm -hmm. Ruben WCSA, if you just put at gmail.com, if you just put my email there, all you got to do is send me an email and just say, I want the silencing the inner critic. I will give you this training. It's mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. And there's some people on here who's taking it. It will literally change your life but it helps you call out who you are right now so mm -hmm. that you start living that legacy in order to leave it. Mm -hmm. So take action, uh, whoever is in the audience, take action, make sure you connect with uh, doc Dr. Um, Robin West and uh, get the, the test, get the silent, silent your inner critic test and don't hesitate to, to really, you know, it's gonna help you to go to your next level of greatness Indeed. and and understand you know what you who you are and uh, what you can do with what you have 
inside of you. So we we gotta run another another last video on doc, Doctor um, Doctor Robin West, and then we'll 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 close out on 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 the show. Wendell Graham, Mobile, Alabama. Mark Craven from uh, Los Angeles, California. And this is on fire. John McClung, I'm from the Atlanta area. Hi, this is Donald Davis. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm um, enjoying being here at, at the um, Black Belt Speakers and um, having a fun time. My name is Patrick Artis. I'm from D.C. I must say that tonight so far, the energy is beyond words. It's phenomenal. Whoever has not been a part of this Black Belt Speakers training, you're really missing out on something fantastic, something great. Man, it is outstanding, outstanding. We're having a great time here. Hey, my name's Roland Manny. I'm from Dublin, Ohio, and I'm here at the uh, Black Belt Speakers event. And this is my fourth time coming back, and, and this is really better than ever. Dr. West always takes it up a notch. The room is exciting. The people are excited. And, and for over 40-something people are brand new for the very first time, and it's like we've known it forever. So I encourage you to get here, to check it out. If you want to change your life and change people, other people's lives, get here. The, the energy is amazing. I'm writing my second book called Why I Want to Hug the Whole World. So to walk into a room and immediately be greeted with like 50 hugs, I'm in the right place. <laughs> One of the things that is very, very good about the training is that you don't you leave with all the necessary tools that you should have. It's one of the most dynamic uh, training sessions that I've been in the last two times. And this is like a family experience. It's not really uh, a training, it's actually an experience. And that's one of the things that a lot of individuals will take away from this is that you, go, you can go to a lot of other trainings and you leave trying to figure out what to do. When you leave here, you know what to do. So that's the good thing about coming to a Black Belt Speaker training. So, Dr. West, um, what's your last word for the for the audience today? Uh, what do you what do you want to leave us with today? That at some point you're going to have to answer to your Creator for the life that you live, for all the skills, gifts, talents, and abilities that you were given. And the question is, will you be able to say, "I can use everything you've given me"? That's my plan. That's my focus. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Dr. West. How we can connect with you and, uh, you know, especially for people who want to continue the conversation. And I know there's going to be a lot of them in my audience to, uh, to, uh, to, to get, you know, to connect with you and continue this conversation. Sure. So uh, some people had already been messaging me on my phone. I see my phone. <laughs> uh, uh, there, uh, and they're asking about uh, reaching out to me. You can reach me on social media right here on Facebook. If you just go to Ruben West and, and send me a message, uh, I'll connect with you. You can also reach me on my website at, uh, at RubenWest.com. And then you can send me an email as well. And she put the email in there. But, but for those of you who are, have questions about the uh, speaker training, um, I do offer online training and I, live training and as, as well as one-on-one -on -one help. So if you're interested in that, all you have to do is send me a, an email or reach out to me on Facebook through Messenger, and I'll definitely get back with you. And we'll set you on this, the path to creating the impact that you were destined to create. Remember, it's not about becoming number one. It's about being the only one. God created you unique, and let's keep you that way. Fantastic. So it's not about becoming number one. It's, it's about becoming the one, the only one. The only one. The only one. Yes. So remember that it's about becoming the only one. You don't have to compete to with anybody. You just need clarity in your own life. Understand your purpose. Have you know a clear plan. Make sure you have the right people around you. You have your mastermind and you have the right support because you can't do it on your own. 
and also have faith because the, the creator is, you know, guiding you and make sure you tap into him in, in those moments of difficult, you know, when it's it's very difficult and you, you can't handle anything that's in front of you. So make sure you don't leave anything on the table of life, die empty and leave a legacy. And this legacy starts now. now. Don't try to postpone it it start now start to you know create the legacy that you want to leave so that you know when you know when you you depart it stay behind and uh, and you don't have anything to to regret so that's that's going to be the end for us uh we have another show this week on friday we have we're going to have a very inspiring uh, woman um uh, with us uh, Bizila Bococo, she's a Spanish American. Uh, she lives between, uh, you know, Madrid and then New York, and she's very inspiring as well. She's a business person. She's uh, she's done so much, and she's a humanitarian. So you you really gonna love her, and um, I'm really you know very very happy to have her uh, on my show. Uh, if you want to connect with me. Um, for those who, you know, who still don't know who I am and who have not connected with me, uh, this is how you can do that. And uh, I'm really looking forward, you know, to have you back uh, next next Friday because it's going to be, again, an inspiring session with Bizila because she's just amazing. So thanks again, Dr. West, for, you, you know, for being my guest today. I've learned so much. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, an, an amazing, it has been an amazing conversation. Thanks for your insights, for your inspiration, your wisdom. And I wish you all the best, you know, uh, as you continue your work of civility and being an ambassador for peace and for us to have a better life, you know. So that's, uh, that's, that's really amazing. Thanks to all who have tuned in today. I hope you've learned a lot like I did and uh, and, I, and I hope that you're going to be back on Friday to uh, to join me as uh, I have a conversation with Bizila. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you.